Welcome back everyone to another ESO build video. Today is going to be the update to the Hiss Keeper, the Warden Healer for the Scalebreaker DLC. Now I know there are a lot of changes in Scalebreaker as far as healers are concerned, especially with their main base skills that are used a lot. And healing did change a little bit in terms of what you really need to do, rather than just spamming the same thing over and over and over. But don't worry, we've got it covered. So first of all, we're going to go into the stats, put some buffs on, make sure everything is running, which it should be. A lot of buffs. So, we are sitting on 36.3k max magicka, 18k health, 10k max stam, and 2.3k mag recovery. 2.2k spell damage, which will go up. 39.0% spell crit. And if I put my resist buffs back on again, because they fell off. We are on 22k spell resist and 20.2k physical resistance. Now, that is actually not quite right. That actually goes up a lot, lot more. But we will explain that when we get to the gear. I'll demonstrate exactly where the rest of those resistances come from. We're very, very tanky. Now, of course, we are using the Ritual Munda Stone, giving us a 15% increase to all healing done, which is insane. And we're using the Clockwork Citrus food, the gold stuff. This gives us a health bonus, a magicka bonus, a mag recovery bonus, a health recovery bonus, all at the same time. Now, any food that gives you multiple different bonuses, obviously, each one will be smaller and smaller and smaller. So there's four bonuses here. They are quite low in comparison to the flat food. But the reason is this. If you use a flat food, which you can choose to do, you will, of course, have massive health and massive magic. As you can see here, it goes up by quite a lot. 30 9k almost max magicka and 19k health but your recovery goes down so you do have to consider that that is the trade-off if you choose to do so if you go flat food yes you will get much much higher resources but your recovery will go down some people can manage it some people can't but the choice is yours but for the purpose of the video we are mostly using this good gold stuff if you don't have access to this by the way which mothers will be just fine you'll just lose a health recovery and a little bit of uh, flat mag recovery as well a little bit of health and a little bit of mag but not enough to notice now, I'm going to explain the skills in detail. I know people have seen healing springs before, and they know in the past, just spam it. No, things got changed. If you do skip this part, it is entirely up to you, of course. You are more than welcome to do so. There are timestamps available if you want to do that. But if you do miss out on information and then try and ask about it in the comments section, if it's already been answered, I won't answer it again. So it's at your own risk if you skip. So, first of all, basic stuff. First skill on the bar is, of course, the Blue Betty. This is in the Animal Companion skill line. It's a fourth ability you unlock, so while leveling, you will need to put a couple of these skills on your bar. Starts off as Betty Netch, morph it to Blue Betty. Now, this will give you 5,376 Magicka over 27 seconds, which is nuts. That ends up being on top of your recovery, not far short of 400. I think it's like 398 or something like that. It doesn't properly calculate out to that because... If you look at your combat metrics, it tells you how much you get back. It should be like 192 or something a second, which is a bit weird. Where's my recovery? Do, 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 do. Here we go. 192 per second, apparently. So if you multiply that by two, it's 384 every two seconds. So not far off of 400. Now, this doesn't show in our stats. As you can see here, I'm on 1957 without the potion and everything. Activate it. I'm still on 1957. So we've effectively got almost 2.4k recovery there. And if you put your potion on, with your recovery bonuses, we're on 2.3. And if you add the 400 on top, that puts us roughly effectively to 2.7. We have extremely high recovery, but like a lot of skills and sets in the game, this doesn't show in our stats. This also grants us major sorcery increase in our spell damage by 20%, which is mental because, of course, the higher the spell damage, the stronger the heals. So make sure this is active at all times. Not only that, this is free. Now, if you do have a negative effect on you as well, this will remove it. So if you have a dot on you, a bleed or something to that effect and you activate this, that's a free cleanse. It will restart the entire timer again, start your recovery from scratch, restart your major sorcery buff, which is huge, gives you a 20% increase and doesn't cost you a thing. Very, very simple to use. Make sure you never let this run out. Next up is Combat Prayer, of course. I'm sure you've seen this before if you're a healer. This is in the Restoration Staff skill line. It's the third ability you unlock. Starts off as Blessing of Protection. Morph it to Combat Prayer. Now, what this does is this um, casts or slams down a carpet of heals, basically. Just one tick, one initial hit, that's it, in front of you. 
and anyone caught inside of this will get a rather large heal, especially if you crit. Now, not only that, but for activating it, anyone caught inside of this as well will gain minor berserk, increasing all of their damage that they do by 8%, and it will also give them minor ward and minor resolve, increasing their physical and spell resistance by 1, 3, 2, 0. This has a higher duration than it usually would, but we'll explain that when we get to the gear. It's a buff for your group, it's an emergency heal if need be, but essentially you must keep this up. It's protection and damage output for your group. Very, very important indeed. Next up is Expansive Frost Cloak. This is nuts. This is in the Winter's Embrace skill line. First ability to unlock, so no excuses there. Starts off as Frost Cloak, morph it to Expansive Frost Cloak. Now what this does is gives us a major resistance buff. This combat prayer here, this does apply to us as well, is a minor resolve and minor ward. This one here is a major resolve and major ward. And unlike everybody else's class resistance buff, this one applies to your group. So everyone in the game, every single class has their own physical and spell resistance buff, which is exactly the same as this, major resolve and major ward. But this one covers your entire group. And because of its range, which is 28 meter radius, which is absolutely enormous, you can basically always give everyone in your group this resistance buff in any trial, dungeon, whatever situation, because it's very hard to get out of that range. So make sure you keep this up 100% of the time, protect your group with this major ward and major resolve buff, and they don't need to bring their own resistance buffs, not even the tanks. Keep that up. Do not let it run out. If you're looking at the blue and the gold symbols at the bottom right-hand corner of the buff timers, it's a very, very, very long duration buff. Don't fail it. Next up is, of course, Inner Light. You don't have to have this, by the way. You can put another Healy skill on there if you want, but this is from the Major Skill skill line. First ability to unlock starts off as Mage Light, Morpher to Inner Light. This is pretty much on our bar just for stats, because while slotted, your maximum magic is increased by 5%. Obviously, higher resources, stronger your skills. And you gain Major Prophecy, increasing your spell crit rating. So on this bar, we do actually have higher crit chance. And we do want to have high crit chance, so we can crit heal more often. It's a very, very simple skill. Leave it on your bar. Next up is Illustrious Healing. Now, I know some of you are shouting Healing Springs. Well, you can use that if you want. But this one got altered quite considerably. Grand Healing is the initial morph. It's the first ability to unlock, by the way. Very easy to get. But if you morph it to Healing Springs, it has a shorter duration and you gain a small amount of magic back for each person that gets healed per tick. This, however, is much, much stronger per tick. So it's a very, very powerful heal and it heals once per second. This used to last three seconds or so and you used to have to reapply it, reapply it, reapply it, stack and stack and stack and spam the hell out of it. You no longer have to do that. 12 second duration. It's a heal over time. So all you do is put it on the ground and leave it. Look at those heals. I'm not even buffed up at the moment. 3.9, 3.9, 2.3 at flat. Very, very nice indeed. And if you put spell uh, increase on, obviously, that goes higher. And so on and so forth. We'll get to all the big buffs and bonuses and you'll see how high this can really go later. But it's very, very nice. Keep this up 100% of the time along with your resistance buff. And once almost every 12 seconds, keep up a combat prayer. Doesn't get simpler than that at the moment. And that's your front bar. That's all you have to worry about. Now, our ultimate is here for three reasons. This is from the Winter's Embrace skill line, by the way. It's your ultimate that you unlock at level 12. Starts off as Sleet Storm, morph it to Northern Storm. This one is our protection ultimate. It's used for multiple reasons. Now, if you activate this, anyone around you that is an enemy will have their speed reduced and they will take damage. Any friendly around you will receive major protection, reducing the damage they take by 30%. Not only that... For slotting this, you have an increased 8% max magicka on this particular bar. And finally, there is another passive which we will get to after the skills, which will make this even more relevant on our front bar alongside of our expansive frost cloaks. It's very, very nice indeed. This is your protection, your oh shit ultimate. Really, really important, but unless we need to, for the most part, we're going to be using our back bar ultimate, which is coming up in a moment. Back bar, of course, we are using Enchanted Growth. This is very, very powerful. I know a lot of people have been trying to spam Combat Prayer as their main base heal, which is quite nice. 7k, let's get a crit out of this. There you go, 13k. Pretty good. But this skill here, which is in your green balance skill line, by the way, first ability to unlock starts off as Fungal Growth, morph it to Enchanted Growth. This actually does a lot more. 9k there flat. Instead of 13k when you crit, it's 15. 
So, almost 16 in fact. Once you get your buffs on, it's a very, very powerful heal. Way in excess of 21k and, and up, in fact. But, the main thing this skill is good at, apart from that little burst heal, which is handy in front of you, by the way, because it is a cone effect, is the fact that this gives you minor intellect and minor endurance, increasing your stam and mag recovery by 10% for a massive 28 seconds as well. Now, this applies to anyone that is affected by this. So every single person receives a heal and gets this minor buff, which goes alongside of their major buffs. So, as you can see here, I've got no buffs in the bottom corner that are not permanent. And now we've got... Well, we'll ignore the guy standing there in the red, but look at the two on the right with the purple backgrounds. One blue, one green. Those two are increasing my stam and mag recovery. Very, very helpful to keep your group's resources up and your own as well. So it's a heal and it's a buff at the same time. Keep that up. Even if you don't use it as a spammable, which you don't have to, make sure once every 28 seconds you apply this. So as you may have noticed so far, we are using a lot of durated buffs and a duration heal as well. If you're paying attention, that is over time. Now, next up is Energy Orb. This is in the Undaunted skill line, and this is the bane of the forum's existence for some people. This is the fifth ability you unlock. Starts off as Necrotic Orb, morph it to Energy Orb. For anyone that hasn't kept up with what has happened with the popular screaming for no good reason, apart from, oh my god, I don't understand what's going on, this got changed for the better. Previously, if you were honest with yourself, you would admit that you saw multiple healers throwing out loads and loads of orbs and no one's bloody taking them. Then, the soon as suggestion for change came up, everybody cried saying it's not fair. Well, you're not taking them anyway, so who cares? But this no longer works the same way as it did before. The heal is stronger. It heals every half a second to anyone nearby. It is slower moving so the heal can stay closer to the group for longer. And the synergy effect is still the same with a twist. If you take this synergy, you will do a burst error effect heal, which can be very, very strong. Also, you will gain back 3,960 magical stamina depending on which one of the two is highest. However, you can only fire one ball at a time. So... Wouldn't that mean that more people can't take the synergy? No, because they changed it before it went live. They made it so that multiple people can take this one synergy. Instead of it taking the synergy, the ball disappears, the game over. Loads of people at once can take it. So instead of spamming five orbs at 3.4k magicka apiece and spending about 17k magicka and nobody takes a synergy and you feel like you've just wasted your life, now all you need to do is cast one, everybody near it gets healed, and everybody near it can take the synergy. It's very, very powerful indeed, and a lifesaver for your sustain. So, if you do need to cast another one, if it's gone too far, just cast it. You don't have to sit there spamming loads and loads and loads and loads and hope that one person picks one of them up. Your sustain is so much better, and we've got so much recovery as well, that we are not going to struggle, and neither is your group. It's very, very strong. Not to mention, of course, we went over Healing Springs, the illustrious healing morph of it. That used to be spammed as well. Now, it's a heal over time. Look at my magic. I'm not spending it. One ball. I'm not spending it. But look, there's loads and loads and loads of heals. All the panic was for nothing, wasn't it? Next up is Sanguine Altar. This is also in the Undaunted skill line. Now, this is the first ability to unlock. Starts off as Blood Altar. Morph it to Sanguine Altar. This has been changed as well, also for the better. Before, it used to cost Magicka, and it used to take 1.5 seconds to wind up, which is really awkward, because you can't animation cancel it. And, of course, there would be time periods where you're not actually healing people because you are casting this ability. Whereas now, it costs health, and it's insta-cast. Now, what this does is, in a 28-meter radius, which is massive, any enemies that are affected... Wrong button. We'll be hit with lifesteal. As you can see, it doesn't aggro the targets, but these mud crabs do have it on them. And all you have to do is hit them. If you hit them once a second for taking damage, you will heal, and so will your group. All you have to do is hit the targets that are affected by minor lifesteal. Very, very simple. So this is a, a very passive heal for you and your entire group just for leaving us on the ground, just for being in the fight with the enemies that are caught inside of this. The range is massive, hence why it hasn't got a, uh, a circle around it. 28 meters is huge. Here's an example. This here. Wrong one. Healing Springs. We'll go with that. Or Lustrous Healing. We'll keep calling it Healing Springs because that's what we're used to. That is an 8 meter radius. 
Okay, so that's huge. There's a circle. That's eight. This is 28. Three times the size, easily, and some. Now, all you need to do is activate it and keep it running. If anyone activates this synergy, by the way, they will heal for 40% of their max health. So another very handy synergy. This one heals the group, this one heals you. Two different synergies though. If you're in the group and you see these, take them. They will heal you, they will help you. And if you've got undaunted passives, that will also help, but we'll go to that in a bit. Next up is Radiating Regeneration. This is in the Resto Staff skill line. Second ability to unlock, starts off as Regeneration, morph it to Radiating. This used to be called Mutagen, and it used to affect two people, and if they got hit really, really hard, it would give them a big heal and run out. This no longer does that. Instead, it gives you a 10 second damage uh, heal over time. And it's bloody huge, to put it, put it lightly. As you can see here, we'll get some crits out of it, hopefully. 6.5. Should get a bit more than that. Come on, crit. Should try again. 7. There you go. 7k crits. Absolutely mental. While inside your healing springs, while using bubbles. So, those... Stacked heal over times, which costs us barely no magic at all. It's just three skills and then leave them running. We can heal loads, but bear in mind this is for small content or if you want to spam it for multiple people. The duration is not bad. The amount of people that can hit on one cast is short, so this is probably more useful for dungeons. Although sometimes if you want to, if you've got the opportunity to do so, you can spam it a little bit in trials to fill a few more people with it. But... The choice is yours whether you want to use it or not. It is quite handy in some situations, but it depends on what content you're in. Now, if you want, you can actually change this out to make things a little less complicated. And you can use... Where is it gone? You can use Lotus Blossom. This is from the Green Balance skill line. Fourth ability unlock. Starts off as Lotus Flower, morph it to Lotus Blossom. Now, this has a longer duration. It doesn't give a heal over time, but it does grant you Major Prophecy. So you'll have it on both bars. It's a buff that you'll have on both bars no matter what you do, as long as you activate it. But... If you light attack or heavy attack, which you will be doing, we'll be firing our glyphs off or we will be heavy attacking to get resources back, you will actually heal you or a nearby ally. Now this looks quite low on paper, but the heals can actually be very, very high. Fully buffed out, you can actually do a heavy attack that will heal anywhere between 15 to 20k. So it can be really, really handy. And here's the problem. When you heavy attack, you're not healing unless you've got heal over time running, which technically we do. But this can actually fill the gap because while you're getting resources back, you can still do a burst heal to someone that needs it. So this, again, is a situational swap out. You can change this if you prefer. And finally, you can go into Nature's Grasp and morph it to Bursting Vines. This will pull you to another player like Tarzan and do a massive single target heal. And it will give you 10 ultimate if you heal someone who's under 60% health. And it can happen every once, once every four seconds. But this is very situational. The reason I say this is situational is because you have to be aware of your footwork. Do not use this in a situation that's going to force you into danger. Because I've seen a lot of people do that and they cock it up nearly every time. If you are not capable of chaining as a Dragon Knight or even with um, Silver Leash as a DPS or a tank or whatever... If you can't effectively chain, especially in stuff like Vmol, if you're on a Twins and such like that, if you've tried that and you're rubbish at it, that's fine, but don't use this skill. Because your ability to aim quickly is clearly lacking. So be very, very careful. You do need a specific target to make this work, and if you can't quite aim it properly, you'll probably hit the wrong one, and the person you're about to heal dies. So instead, just stick to the basics and we'll spam the next skill instead, which is now coming up. This is Budding Seed. This is also in our green balance skill line. Second ability to unlock. Starts off as Healing Seed, morph it to Budding Seeds. This also got altered in Scalebreaker. This used to put a big circle on the ground. And if you took a synergy, you would heal. Or if you reactivated it, you would heal the people inside of it. Or if you let it run out, you would heal the people inside of it. That still applies. However... During its full duration, it now heal over time uh, procs as well. So, Healing Springs, or Illustrious Healing, does this. Dam uh, heal over time. And Budding Seeds also heals over time. And yes, of course, they stack. So put one down, put the other down, and stand in it. Have a bubble as well. Treat yourself. How good is that? So many area of effect, large area of effect, in fact, 
ground-based heals over time. But, what did I say about consuming it? You can reactivate the ability and take it away and do a massive heal. For those that said uh, Wardens don't have burst heals, that is 14k flat. But if you crit it, 24k. Now buffed, you can actually hit in excess of around 32-33k crit heals to everyone caught inside of this. Everyone that is eligible for a heal, everyone that is standing in this circle, when that pops or you claim it, will do that burst area of effect heal. It is very, very strong indeed. So you can leave it down and let it pop. You can leave it down until you need it and then claim it. Or you can spam it. Apply it, turn it on, turn it off. Apply it, turn it on, turn it off. While your heal over times are running. Or to keep it simple, put your heals down, throw a bubble out, keep your combat prayer up. Everybody's happy. Now, this does last a shorter duration than healing springs or illustrious healing. This does actually last for six seconds. So it's very short but it's very strong. And obviously this is your main class ability as well. So not only are we a healer with the resto stuff like most are, we are utilizing our class abilities for buffs and burst heals. Very, very handy indeed. Finally, the ultimate on the back bar is also from the green balance skill line. This is Enchanted Forest and this is broken as hell. 90 ultimate. And for six seconds you will heal everyone over time inside the circle and it's the same size circle as budding seeds. This is Budded Seeds, this is Illustrious Healing, and this is your ultimate. You are not going to struggle with heal over time in there. Everyone inside there takes a massive burst heal to start with, and then, over time, will take a heal every second. Not only that, however, if anyone inside this circle, yourself included, is under 50% health, you will gain back 20 ultimate per target. So if there are five people in here and everyone's low health and you pop that ultimate, you just got 100 ultimate back and you can use it again and again and again. Execute phases, this is god mode. It's very, very strong indeed. So keep your hearts up, spam your ultimate, everybody's happy. Now we're going to get into passives and this is going to start making a hell of a lot more sense because there are some shinies in here that are extremely relevant to the setup and may have procced one or two things that you were a bit confused about a moment ago. So, first off, Animal Companions. We are using one ability here. This, when your Animal Companion is killed or unsummoned, you restore 1928 health. Here's the Bane Etch. And there's my 1.9k heal. And, yes, it can crit. So, you can heal yourself for free. And cleanse yourself for free while spamming this. Crazy. Oh, I don't want to go to campaigns. I want to go to skills. Next up, of course, when you cast an animal companion ability while you are in combat, you generate four ultimate. And this can happen once every eight seconds. So keep an eye on this. Don't just let it run out. Apply it whenever you get a free moment in time. A quick split second. Reapply this. As long as there's an eight second gap between the last cast, you'll gain ultimate. And of course, our ultimate is extremely cheap. So we do want to do that. This increases your mag and stam recovery by 12% if an animal companion ability is slotted. As you can see, it is. So we've got high, high recovery on this bar. This here, of course, is not that important. This increases the damage done by 2% for each animal companion ability slotted. We're not doing damage. We're not built for it. Yes, we do a little bit of damage with our resto stuff, but it's not even enough to count. We are really not that worried about this passive. But if you do want the tiny, tiny bonus, then of course you can go for it. Green balance is incredibly important, of course. When you heal yourself or an ally while under 40% health with a green balance ability, specifically, you will gain major mending, increasing your healing done by 25%. And this is for 4.2 seconds. That is higher for a reason. We'll go into that later. But this increases all of your healing done. So all you have to do is heal yourself or somebody else at low health with any heal. 28k crit right there. Now that, again, is missing some buffs. We can get even higher. But what you're looking for, we'll put our health down again with this really annoying sound. You're looking for a yellow symbol on the buff timers. So if you look here very closely, see if I can catch it quick enough. That one there, Major Mending. That will increase all of your healing done by 25%. So if you have this down and this down and bubbles and combat prayer and all that stuff, 
all of this to everyone who you are healing will benefit from that increase damage uh, healing bonus. When you heal an ally with a green balance ability, you gain 250 magicka or stamina, whichever resource pool is lower. Our stamina is lower, so if we're healing people once a second with a green balance ability, and this will all the time, because this is now heal over time, we will actually gain back stamina. Which is nuts, because that means we can help ourselves sustain during mechanics. So dodge rolls, sprints, blocks, all that good stuff. Our stamina regen is very, very high, as long as you keep up this skill. Increase your healing done with green balance abilities by 2% for each one slotted. Now, note very carefully that this is only on this bar. I don't have any on the front bar because of the setup itself, which I'll explain when we get to the gear. But we don't have any green balance abilities on this bar. We do have resto abilities, which do boost our um, output. But our green balance abilities are here, here, and here. We have three on here, which gives us a 6% overall bonus. If you were to use Bursting Vines or... Um, the Lotus Blossom, either one of the two, you would of course get another 2%. So on our back bar, we actually have an 8% healing done on these abilities. But they don't carry over. So it's only while you're on this bar. So if you are here and you need to use this for a burst, obviously stay on the bar and you'll get a bigger heal from doing so. It's very, very important that you keep all the green balance stuff on the same bar because it's only affecting those skills anyway. And while you're casting this, you're not on the front bar casting it. While you're casting this, you're not on the front bar casting it. While you're casting this, you're usually reapplying budden seeds anyway, so you don't need to swap bars. And if you do swap bars while your ultimate is running, it's not the end of the world because you probably got your major mending from that anyway. So this is very important that you keep them here. We'll swap that back to regen because I do like using that. Now, finally, this is very important on green balance. We have a buff for our class that nobody else has in the game. It doesn't exist anywhere else apart from on one set. When you activate a heal on yourself or an ally, you grant them minor toughness, increasing their health by 10%. So basically, all you have to do is heal yourself with anything. So the blue bay can be counted as a heal. So I'll cast it. And now I have minor toughness. Just like that. And that's why my health is 18k and not less. With recovery food. Also, any of this, any of this will give minor toughness. And, just note very carefully, it doesn't have to be a green balance skill. It can be any heal at all. And yes, if you are a stam warden, a mag warden, a tank, or a healer, if you are using a set, or a skill, or a glyph of any kind that grants you any form of heal that you activated or you gained from your own setup, this will proc. Winners Embrace, this is why we have these two abilities on the front bar, by the way. There's some nice passives here. This one increases your chance of applying Chilled to enemies with Winter's Brace abilities by 200%. So, the Chilled status effect will apply Minor Maim, and is really, really handy, especially in big, big ad pulls. And not only does this apply major protection to you and your group, but also it does lots of ice damage. You have a heightened chance to affect targets with Chilled status effects. So this is a very nice passive to have. A little bit of CC and uh, damage reduction there, so very, very handy. Increases your physical and spell resistance by 500 for each Winter's Embrace ability slotted. This is why we put them both on the front bar. The healing bonuses are all on the back bar for the heals that are applied by that particular passive. And our protection buffs are on the front bar because they apply to this particular passive. If you have them all choppy chopped all over the place, you'd never really benefit from anything. And it's all little bits here, little bits there. We've gone full green balance on the back bar as much as we can. And as much of this Winter's Embrace as we can to get this nice passive bonus. Just bear in mind, of course, if you do swap bars, you lose that 1k resistance. So don't stay on the back bar for too long if you can help it. But if you want to be really, really protected, stay on the front. Reduce the effectiveness of snares applied to you by 15%. Very helpful. You don't want to be snared as a healer, especially if you've got to get out of mechanics. You don't want to be the dead one. And increase your magic and frost damage by 6%. This is not massively important, but just bear in mind, the ultimate that we're using for protection does do ice damage, so it will be stronger. And our light and heavy attacks, although they're not massive, are based on magic damage, so that can also contribute as well. So it's a nice passive to have if you've got the spare points. Resto staff, of course, we're using double resto. You want all of these. You gain major mending for 4.2 seconds after completing a fully charged heavy attack, increasing your healing done by 25%. So I showed you a moment ago that if you heal someone under 40% health, you get major mending. 
Well, that's passively, if you've got low health targets. All you have to do is heavy attack something. Look at my buff timers. We've got it again. We've got it now. So all you have to do is keep up your resources, get Major Mending, and pump out loads of heals. So while your hots are running, if you've got nothing else to do, throw out a heavy attack. All your heals go up. 25% bonus. Absolutely insane. And of course, it's much longer than it should be because of our setup. Also, you heal yourself and a nearby ally, or, or a nearby ally rather, for... 46% of the damage inflicted by the final hit of the heavy attack. So obviously the higher the heavy attack, the bigger the heal if you do so. And if you're using Lotus Blossom, like we mentioned earlier, that of course can mean that this is much, much stronger. So very, very handy indeed. When you use a fully charged heavy attack, you will restore 30% more than any other weapon, which is really handy. So high sustain. Restores 540 Magicka when you block a spell. We will be blocking occasionally. You'll get stuff back and increases your healing with your resto staff spells by 5%. So all of our skills, as long as we're holding a resto staff, will be improved. So if you've got someone using healing springs, for example, or illustrious healing, and they swap bars, if they're holding a resto on the back bar, you still get the bonus. If they're using something else, you don't. It goes down. The effectiveness of the skill drops. So if you are using a destro, by the way, this skill just got weaker while you're on your back bar. Don't stay there for too long. Now, light armor, of course, we're using five lights, so we'll take advantage of these as much as we can. This reduces the effectiveness of snares applied to you and reduces the cost of sprint for each piece worn. This increases your mag recovery and reduces the cost of your mag abilities. This increases your spell resistance for each piece worn, and these two require five pieces. This increases your spell crit rating, so we've got a 10% increase there, flat out. And we have spell penetration bonus as well, so we ignore a certain amount of resistances, 4884, uh, in fact. This is not massively beneficial to us, except for our light attacks, our heavy attacks, and of course our Northern Storm, if need be. One piece of medium, you don't need all of these, especially not this one because it requires five pieces. But what I would recommend is you ignore this one because it's about weapon crit and we don't need it. Get this one because it does increase your stam recovery and reduce the cost of your stam abilities. Now, we don't use any stam abilities, but we do want the recovery because we will have to block, dodge, roll, and break free. Improved Sneak is not that important, but this one increases your movement speed if you sprint, which is quite nice, and reduces the cost of dodge roll. So you do want Athletics and you do want Wind Walker. The rest, leave them alone. Heavy Armor, of course, we don't need these two because they require five pieces, but we are using one. This will give us increased resistances for the one piece. This will give us a health recovery bonus, which isn't that important because we're a vampire anyway, but it will give us a 108 Magicka and Stam return every time we get hit, once every four seconds, so that will help towards our sustain. And a 2% bonus to max health. And we've got loads of health. Anyway. We are of course a stage 4 vampire at the moment. You can drop your stage if you really want to. I'm not going to argue the toss about why you do or don't want to stay a stage 4 vampire. I complete content with stage 4 vampire. Simple as that. I'm used to the mechanics. They don't bother me. If it's a problem for you, change it. That's fine. It's your choice. But there are two stages you do definitely want. And that is 2 and 3. So this increases your magic and stam recovery by 10% if you're stage 2 or higher. And this... Reduces the damage you take by up to 33% based on your missing health while you are below 50. So the lower your health, the less damage you take. We are very tanky anyway, but if we go low health, especially since we're the ones with the heals, we're fine because we take less and less and less damage. And remember, as a warden, if you heal people under 50% health, you get a bonus. If you heal people under 40% health, you get a bonus. Where's the 50%? That's in our ultimate. So if we are low... And we're under 50%. We get 20 ultimate back for using this. If we're under 40, we get major mending as well. And this will put us straight to full health, no trouble at all. And then we can keep spamming it. So this passive is not only a benefit for us in terms of survival, but it actually pumps out higher heals for us because we have our little thresholds there where we boost them. It's really, really handy. Now, Fighters Guild, you don't necessarily need any skills here, but you will want to take advantage of this passive. You will generate 9 ultimate whenever you kill an undead Daedra or Werewolf. Now, it's very unlikely that you're going to do that, but say for argument's sake you are heavy attacking something and it dies, you will get the ultimate for it. If you've put up your Northern Storm and something dies in that, you will get ultimate for it. And that will benefit us, of course, because that makes you build ultimate much faster. Maybe you can get your heals out quicker. It's really, really handy, so do get this passive. Mage's Guild, of course, you don't actually need all of these, but you do want to get this down here. Magical Control is really, really helpful. Increases your maximum magic and recovery by 2% for each skill slotted. We do have one right here, so we'll take the extra bonus. Really nice flat stat stuff. It's not hugely essential, but it does add a little bit of a kick to it. Not using anything there. 
um, Undaunted is very important. Every single synergy that you take will give you 4% of your max resources back. For God's sake, take the synergies. Do not leave them lying around for everybody else. This is the reason bubbles were affected in the first place, because people don't take the bloody synergies. The reason people don't take the synergies is because they assume that they're just for the tank. They're not. They are for everyone. So, they had to enforce a very easy to use version of the bubbles. No one was taking them, so they put it in your face. So now everyone can take it. They're encouraging you to use synergies. Take them. Every single one will give you resources back for this passive. They may give you resources back in their actual synergy themselves. They can do damage. They will heal you. They will shield you. They all help. Don't be scared of them. Take the synergies. Increases your max health, stamina, and magicka by 2% for each type of armor worn. We're wearing three different types, remember? One heavy, one light, five medium. There's your 6% bonus across the board. Get these passives. Now... This is not something that we're actually using at the moment, but you can slot it if you want to. You can, of course, use Purge, whichever one of the two morphs you preference. And you can put it on your back bar in place of Lotus Blossom, or maybe even Sanguine Altar if somebody else is running it. Because in some content, you may need to cleanse people, so you might need some PvP for that. In the meantime, if you do that, you will want to get this passive, because this will increase your mag recovery for whichever bar that skill is on. Also, just a note, by the way, ultimate-wise, you can swap out Northern Storm for Replenishing Barrier, or for um, Aggressive Warhorn. The choice is actually yours. For the most part, we're using the Protection Buff and the Heal, but if you want to use Aggressive Warhorn or Re Replenishing Barrier, you can do so. Now, of course, we are an Argonian. That wasn't obvious, was it? He's a Lizard. Now, this will increase your healing done by 6%, which is enormous. This will increase your max health by 1,000 and your disease resistance by 2, 3, 10, which is nuts. And you are immune to disease status effects. Disease status effects is Defile. Defile nerfs your healing. We are immune to it. Very handy indeed. Increases your Magicka by 1k and the most broken passive on the Argonian. It's absolutely friggin' insane. When you drink a potion of any kind... You will get 4k max health, max magic, and max stamina back. So, for argument's sake, let's use a magic pot. This doesn't give us any health. It just gives us 7.5k magic back plus bonuses. Wrong. This gives us 7.5k magic back plus 4k magic health and stamina. That's just a, an example. Now this here... Which does go much, much higher. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this potion again later when I put all my buffs on. This will give us a 12.8k health back, 7.5k magic, and 7.5k stamp. Add 4k to every single one of those stats. Our resource gain, our recovery, everything to do with our usage of our skills. Our efficiency is so high. And not only that, the most important passive in the game, even more so for this particular build. When using potions... They last 30% longer. We're using crafted pots. They normally last 36 seconds. For us, they would last 47 seconds because of the 30% increase, which means the cooldown is 45. We can use a potion 100% of the time. So whatever benefits are on there will never run out. And they get even stronger because we're now going to go into the gear. And this is where it gets nuts. We are using a Master's Resto on the front bar. This is very, very important, by the way. Front bar. Because this is where our illustrious healing is. Our grand healing, if you like. It's on our front bar. We want this weapon on that bar. Because if we use it, the initial heal restores a whopping 740 stamina to you and your allies. Now, we don't have to spam this. We just leave it running. But we can, if we want to, just keep reapplying it and give everyone a massive burst of stamina. Now, everyone used to do this in the first place and still sustain. Look at my Magicka recovery. I'm fine. I'm not going to spam this all the time. But if the group calls for low stamina or you're in a Furian Archive, the boss in the middle, the second boss, the Rock Atro, you're down to 75%. He is sitting down and starting to throw out his shapes and everyone's got a block. But people are low on stamina. You are feeding their stamina while they're blocking, so nobody's going to die. Now, here is how powerful it is. We'll do a couple dodge rolls, and then a whole block, because our stam recovery doesn't go up. No stam going up. That, to a DPS, or a tank, or even a healer, is 
very, very helpful. I'm blocking the entire time. Now let's do it without blocking. Based on our stam recovery that we do have. I need to dodge roll again. There we go. Now, block to start with to, to hold it there. Now let go. In combat, that's going to make a very, very substantial difference. You do not need to spam this skill, but in emergencies, you can make sure that people do not run out of juice. This is very helpful in some of the harder content, especially Halls of Fabrication, where there are lots of blocks and stuns and break freeze, especially Alfurian Archive Hard Mode, where you've got lots of blocks to do from the Meteors. This is a very, very strong set. It did get boosted in this particular update. Before, it was much, much less per cast. Now it's much more because the idea of it, the application of it, is that you only cast it once. But because you can cast it multiple times, you just have to watch your resources. This is from VDSA, by the way, Vet Dragon Star Arena. That is in the description. There is a written guide and a video demonstrating how to get it. Get in there and get it done. If you don't have this, don't panic. Use a crafted star for now. But once you do, you're going to benefit from that bonus. We are using an increased weapon damage and spell damage glyph on the front bar with 9% increase from the power trait as well to our healing done. The reason we have the weapon and spell damage glyph enchant on the front is because the higher your spell damage and the higher your healing done, the stronger your heals. And this weapon is full of healing done because of the power trait and we've got increased spell damage. Make sure that while you're casting your abilities, don't just cast them and leave them alone. Light attack in between. As you can see, I've got my Berserker Enchant now. So I can keep up some nice, handy spell damage. No, it's not infused, so there will be a slight gap, but it will count. It's very, very handy indeed. Now, we're not using any poisons, of course, because we're using, utilizing the Glyph. We are using Lord Warden's Helmet. This is for your group. Remember, we are a buff monster. We've got loads of heal over time. We've got a crap ton of buffs, and we are going to stay close to the group. This gives us a spell resistance bonus and a physical bonus which is why it's so high, and if you take damage, and as a healer, you will take damage. Everyone takes damage, that's why you're there. You have a 50% chance to summon an orb for 10 seconds that surrounds you and your group within the area, within 8 meters in fact, which is the same, the same area as our healing springs, or our illustrious healing. Same area, same area as our budden seeds, same area as our ultimate. It will land right there, so it's, we don't even have to move. And this is what it looks like. While it happens, by the way, you and your group will receive 3870 physical and spell resistance the whole time. It procs really, really easily. So let's demonstrate this over here. We'll bring this mud crab in. There's heals. Look, look at that. That big blue circle there, or purple circle, that is your resistance buff. And this is where it's important. At the beginning, I told you I had 22k resistances. 22 and 20, actually. So I'll put combat prayer on, I'll put my resist buff on, and now we'll look again. 25.9 and 24.1 resistances. That's insane for a healer. It's very, very high, and your group is going to benefit from that to no end. I know sometimes tanks like to use them, but let's face it, sometimes the boss is so big that the tank is over here, and the group is over here, and no one's getting that resistance buff because they can't reach. But we can. Stay close to your group, keep in your own circles, and everybody else will get buffed healed and increased resistances really really handy now the set that we're using the main set of course is your builds now if you haven't figured this out already this increases our minor and major buffs and our damage shields all the durations are up now this has a magic recovery bonus a magic recovery bonus a healing done bonus which does stack alongside of our six percent from our class or race sorry and our nine percent from our trait and all major and minor buffs are increased. So, if we look at the skills, this here has major sorcery on it. The actual blue betty lasts 27 seconds. The major sorcery does not. Major sorcery lasts a lot, lot longer. Way over 30 seconds. In fact, 38 seconds. Our minor toughness from our passives, which is from the green balance passive over here, lasts 28 seconds instead of 20. This lasts 34 seconds almost, instead of much, much less. Our combat prayer is supposed to last around 8 seconds or so. It now lasts over 11. We've got lots and lots of different minor and major buffs that actually benefit. So our resistance, our heal, and our minor berserk, our minor resistance bonus, our spell increase, our buffs here, minor endurance and intellect, 28 seconds instead of 20. 
Hopefully that isn't too confusing, but basically you can see how we've got much, much higher uptime on our buffs and bonuses. How does that affect us? Well, since this doesn't have to be cast every 8 seconds and could be cast over every 11, since this doesn't have to be cast every 25 or 28 or whatever it was before, and now can be every 33, since this doesn't have to be cast so much and this doesn't have to be cast so much, the energy orb doesn't have to be cast as much now because of how it's changed, this doesn't have to be because of how this has changed, all of our stuff has slowed down. Our healing is constantly there because of heal over times. And our buffs are constantly there because of their massive uptimes. Which, what does that affect? Our sustain. Because we don't have to buff as often, we have much, much more sustain to throw out these shapes in emergencies if we really have to. With these massive burst heals alongside of our durated ones. Very, very handy. And one more final note on that. Major Mending should be 3 seconds, and for us it's 4.2. That's a big increase. Very, very good indeed. Now, we are now going to the other set, which is somewhat confusing for most. This is Olorimes. You don't have to have Perfected. Perfected just gives you 1k extra max magicka. The regular version from normal is just fine. The buff is exactly the same. The max magic is the only difference. Now, this is incredibly important. This has mag recovery. It has minor Aegis, reducing the amount of damage you take. It has mag recovery again. Max magic if you have the perfected and not if you don't. But this applies major courage. Which, again, this should be a 30 second buff. But it's not. It's 42 because of your builds. Massive, massive bonus. This increases the spell damage and the weapon damage of your group, yourself included, if they're inside this circle that lasts 10 seconds. They have 10 seconds to step into it or for you to put it on their head, and then they have 42 second uptime on the buff. But, this is only applied by ground-based abilities while in combat. So a heal or a damage ability, if it's ground-based, like this, that will fire. If it's not, it won't. And I've seen people make it land over there, over here, over there, and really they want it here. So you have to decide what skills you're going to use to benefit from it. But you can't do that on the front bar because you could be casting healing springs all over the place and it might not make sense. So what we do is we deliberately put it on our back bar only. So that when we swap bars, that's when we benefit from the overall bonus, obviously. Now just remember, obviously, the, the Betty Netch is on the front bar to increase our stamp uh, mag recovery as well as give us a bonus. We don't have it on the back bar, but on the back bar, this does give us a mag bonus. So if you swap bars on the front we have a flat 1957 swap bars to the back we don't have the betty anymore we're still on 1969 because of the bonus that we carry over with the fourth piece you don't get it on the front you do get it on the back now this here will apply it this will apply it that's it that's all we've got on the back bar that could apply it. these two things so what you need to do, whenever you want to make this land on the ground, use your button seeds to proc it. Once it's down, that's when you then put your funnel down. Otherwise, if you go funnel first, this second, it's already going to be here. Now I'm going to give you your example. I'm in combat. Damn, it's under my feet. I may have wanted it there, so that works out fine. But what if I didn't? After 10 seconds, it's gone. So you put it somewhere else. You can physically place this wherever you need to. And if the heals are over there and that's where the damage is required and that's where the group is and they're the ones that need the buff, place it over there. Because now they can all get it. If you mess it up, you've got 10 seconds before you can recast it. So don't make a mess. If you want loads and loads of burst damage, once you're in combat, place that where you want it. But here's the bonus. Most people cast it with healing springs and mess it up and they, they don't mean to, but their casting all over place is gone. Look, I can't apply it with healing springs. Because it's not on the front bar. I can guarantee control on this bar and still pump out heals on the front. Very, very strong indeed. So, Masters on the front, Olorimes on the back. You don't need to double bar it. You're benefiting in no way whatsoever by double barring this. If you double bar it, it just means I can cast it here. Or I can cast it here. But I've just missed out on the opportunity of a whole front bar weapon, which will give everyone stamina back. Use your brain. Back bar this, front bar this. Now, jewelry, by the way, spell damage on everything. We've got a shit ton of recovery anyway. 
Arcane on all of them as well. So you want Olorimes, five piece on the back bar only. So three pieces, whether it be jewelry or body, and then the staff on the back. And then the body can be five pieces of your worlds, or you can mix with the jewelry, whatever you've got access to. But your worlds must be on at all times, and Olorimes must be on only on the back. The trait and glyph choice, by the way, is reduced weapon and spell damage, so you can actually debuff the enemy while light attacking. So make sure that you light attack and then skill. Every time you cast a skill, light attack first, even as a healer, just to keep those procs up. Very simple. And of course, it's powered. Powered on both bars to give us a massive healing done bonus. And it doesn't just affect our heals. It actually affects our potion as well. So if we're really, 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 really low, you saw earlier that I've got a 12k potion. That's because we have healing done in our passives. We have it in our skills. We have it in our race. We have it in our gear. We've even got it on our trait here. We've got it on our gear here. We've got it all over the place. But if you have Major Mending as well, your potions and your heals obviously get stronger. People overlook the potion. We have this here. We have tripods, which we're using. So we get a 12.8k heal from using this. But since it counts as a heal, Major Mending. That goes up to 15k. And we have an Argonian passive, which makes it go all the way up to 19k. We heal for 19k from a potion. So what I'm going to do is drop my health really, really low. Hopefully not die to the mud crabs. And then pop a potion. One more. One more should do it. Actually, we'll just take it here. Full health. Hello. That's insane. Absolutely mental. Now I'm going to go into the champion points and then we are pretty much done apart from application, which I'll explain after this. So we have 72 points into Ironclad to reduce the amount of direct damage we take. 64 and 64 into these to make sure that we protect ourselves by 13% against all elemental types, all damage types. 19 points into Fixed Skin to reduce the amount of damage we take from damage over time. And yes, these do all stack alongside of each other. That's the flat damage, that's the dot damage, and this is direct damage. They all stack nicely together depending on what you're being hit by. 90 points into quick recovery to increase the amount of healing received we have. That is for our own heals and from other people as well. So if we actually get heals from someone else, this will benefit. Or if we get it from ourselves as well. Field position is very important for everyone, but you are a healer. Do not sacrifice heals for a res. You can take less damage while resurrecting people, yes. But make sure your heals are down before you do this. Some of the biggest fails I've ever seen is a healer going, Oh, I can pick you up really quickly. Oh, that's nice. What's everyone else doing? They're dying. Make sure if you have to res someone. It should always be a last resort for a healer anyway. But if you have to res someone, make sure your heal over times are all running first. Then go for the res. Until then, don't touch them. 44 points into Warlord to reduce the cost of break free. We do have very high stam return, especially with our master staff. But we do obviously want to reduce the cost and we can get it back quickly. Tenacity obviously increases the amount of magical we get back from a heavy attack. Plus we've got 30% from our passives anyway. And Arcanus increases our mag recovery. So 75 points in each. Don't go to 100 because if you do, you're going to waste 25 points that you could have put in here. 72 points into Tumbling to reduce the cost of dodge roll. We will need to do that. We do have a small stamp pool, although we get it back quite quickly. This will help reduce the cost. This is only 1% here because the 0.97 doesn't count. So you could put the other two points somewhere else if you really wanted to. But for having 75 points or more in this tree, we have had access, of course, to this really nice passive here where if you loot treasure chests, you have increased quality items. 75 points into Bless to increase our healing done by 14%. Now, just bear in mind, our set has got 4% on it. Our passive for our Argonian has got 6%. Our traits have got 9%. Major Mended is 25%. This is another 14%. we have got a lot of healing done and high spell damage as well. Very, very handy indeed. Elfborn, of course, if you do crit, you do want to make sure we can get the most out of it. So 72 points in here increases all of our crit heals and crit damage done with magic abilities by 23%. So it's very, very nice. One point is Spell Erosion because it's all I've got left. I've got nowhere to put it. But the remaining points, of course, before this... 47 points into Staff Expert to make sure that obviously any heavy attacks or light attacks that we do increase in damage. This is very important for getting that returned heal from a full charge heavy attack. Now 75 points in here is purely for our heavy attacks, a little bit for our Northern Storm, but mostly for our heavy attacks. Because although this does increase our lights and heavies, this does increase the channel of our heavy attack because it is damage over time. At the same time, because it's 75 points in here, gives us the exploiter passive. Now, if something is off balance, you'll get double resources back. You'll have a 70% 70 increase on your heavy attack itself, plus obviously the damage increase from Thermoturge, plus the 10% here. Your actual heavy attacks will be very, very strong in comparison to what they should be, 
and that means that the heal coming from it can be much, much stronger. So during those phases, if you are gathering back resources, you'll do a little bit more damage and you'll get a little bit more back and you'll help heal other people as well from doing so rather than just doing nothing. So you can go flat into these if you really want to, but the difference is so minimal. You may as well get another bonus instead of doing nothing at all. So key points to remember. We have massive uptimes on our buff. This... Minor Berserk, Minor Resistance buff for everyone in front of you. Keep it up once every 11 to 12 seconds. This one here, Major Resistance buff for you and your group. Keep it up every 30 seconds or so. Major Sorcery for yourself. Keep it up every 30 seconds. The Fungal Growth on the back bar. Again, every 28 seconds. Keep it up. And above all, keep your Budden Seeds and Illustrious Heels running while throwing out bubbles when you need to. Very, very simple. We don't have to actively spam stuff, but if your group is in trouble and they all need that extra stamina, we can spam this to benefit from the Master's Staff. Which is very helpful indeed. Don't forget, by the way, you must be close by. This is not a long-ranged healer. You can go back a little bit, but make sure you stay in your heals. Make sure you can give heals to everybody else in front of you. Don't stand in front of them. Stand behind them or with them. Your resistance buff for the group is going to make a massive difference, especially once Lord Warden procs. Yes, you can use other monster sets, but for the purpose of this video, we are using this. It's very, very nice indeed. You are a protector, you're a buffer, and you're a healer. Do it properly. So first of all, thank you all very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. And if you are not subscribed, and please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you want to help support the channel outside of YouTube, there are some links in the info section for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and of course the website, zynodgaming.com, where all the written guides are, including the dungeon guides and now trial guides as well. Also, don't forget, I do live stream every night on Twitch from 10 p.m. UK time, unless I say otherwise on Twitter. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.